Hey guys, hope it all is well with everybody. In this video, we're going to be continuing on with the practice algebra exam, starting with num number 24. So in this question, we're asked 4 to the second power, or 4 squared, minus 2 to the fourth power equals, and then we have an answer bank here. Now, what I really want to illustrate to you guys in this question is be very careful of your properties of exponents. Remember, 4 to the second power is equal to 4 times itself twice. It does not equal 4 times 2. So let's be very careful about that. Remember, exponents are a very special property that allow us to take values and multiply themselves many times. Another thing to keep in mind is when we have an exponent of 1, we don't really see it because we just infer the number is times itself by, by 1. So that's something to keep in mind. So keeping those kind of ideas in mind, let's approach this and then break it apart. So 4 to the second power is equal to 4 times 4. No problem. And then I'm going to subtract. I'll keep this in parentheses for now. And then we're going to subtract 2 to the fourth power. Now 2 to the fourth power is just going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Again, I'm expressing it as multiplying itself by 4 times it by itself. So 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now we're just at the part where we just have an arithmetic. So we have 4 times 4, which is 16. And then we have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2, which is 8, times 2, which is 16. And now we just have to take the difference of the two, and that's going to give us zero. And that is indeed choice B. So another thing to keep in mind, or just as a recap, the exponent means to tell us that we're multiplying a number by that many times by itself. So again, for example, 2 to the fifth power is going to be 2 times itself 5 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, and that's going to give us 32 as an example. But again, our answer is B. But let's look at the next question. Alright, so number 25 is... 6x squared plus 4x equals. And then our choices are... Six times x plus two, two x, three x plus two, two x, three x plus one. Two x, six x plus six, and last but not least, two x, two x plus three. Okay. So, as daunting as this looks, it's really not as bad as it seems. What we're basically focusing on in this question is a factoring by greatest common factor. So when, let's recap a little bit about factoring. So when we're doing a greatest common factor, what we're doing is we're taking the prime factorizations of both of these terms individually and seeing what's in common. So let's break these apart to really see what they are composed of and see what they have in common with each other. So what I mean by that is when I break 6x squared apart, 
I can interpret it more of as its prime foundations. So what I mean by that is 6 is equal to 2 times 3. 2 and 3 are both prime numbers. They can't be simplified in any other way. So that's what we're trying to do in the overall prime factorization of any term. We're just taking it to its prime number or values and variables. And then I also have x squared, which is going to be represented by x multiplying itself two times. Now let's look at 4x. 4x, now remember, 2 is a prime number. Its only numbers that it can be divisible by are itself and 1. So 2 is a prime number. So I'm going to represent 4x is equal to 2 times 2 times x. Now, it always helps me when I have factored these to circle what you have in common. That way you can determine your greatest common factor. Because what you're going to do is you're going to multiply all of the common factors and that's going to be what goes out on the outside as your coefficient. So let's see what we have in common. We have a 2 in common and 3 and 2 are in common but we do have 1x in common. Now I can't circle both x's because there's only one x present in 4x. If I had two x's present in both, then I can circle both x's. But since I only have one representation of x in the second term, I can only circle one to say that there's only one x in both of them. So this is what I have in common. I have two x in each of these expressions. So that means that I can take that and set it as the greatest common factor. Then what I have to do is determine what I have left in each of the terms. To make it simple, we've already taken the prime factorization of both these values, so we can see what's left. If we took out a 2x, all we have left from 6x squared from 2x is 3x. I can illustrate that this way. If I take 2x and I multiply it by 3x, I will get 2 times 3, do your whole numbers first, is equal to 6. And then x times x is just x to the second power. So that verifies that I get my original term. Let's look at what we have left down here. So if I took a 2x out of 4x, and its prime factorization is 2x, all I have left is 2x times what's left, which is 2. And I can verify that that gives me my original by 2 times 2 is 4 x times 1, because there's no other value there, we can just infer that x is being multiplied by itself. One thing that you can do if you really wanted to is go ahead and put an inferred 1 right here, just to show that x is being multiplied by 1, because it doesn't have another variable that's being linked with it. So this would still give me 4x. So now that I have a greatest common factor determined, all I have to do is put the pieces back that are taken out from the original. So now what I have is I've taken out the greatest common factor and all I have to do is put back the pieces. So we've determined that, and I'll put this in a square, that 3x is what I had remaining from the first uh, term, 6x squared, and then I had 2 from the second. Okay. Now all I have to do is take the two that are left so I'm going to put 3x here, because that's the first term. And then I'm going to put the same sign that is the arithmetic in the original equation. And then I'm going to put what we have left for 4x. So we have 2. Now, what's great about factoring is you can always check your answer to make sure you came up with the right answer. Because if I took my greatest common factor and I used the distributive property, as long as I end up with my original equation, this factored form is correct. So let's do that. So we have 2x, and I'm going to use the distributive property, which again is just a method of multiplication into multi multiple uh, terms in a um, parentheses. So 2x times 3x is indeed 6x squared. Again, when you're using the distributive property or you're multiplying terms, Start with your whole numbers first, then do your variables. x times x is x squared. And then, I'm going to use the same thing I did before, plus sign 2x 
times 2 is indeed 4x. So my final answer is going to be 2x uh, times the quantity 3x plus 2. And that is indeed answer B. Alright, let's look at one more question. So number 26. Number 26 states that 2 cubed plus 2 squared plus 2 equals. And our answers are. Fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, and twenty-two. All right. So again, we're returning to the properties of exponents. So when we talk about two cubed plus two squared plus two, let's break it apart. Essentially, what that means. Again, exponents mean that we're taking the value. It could be a number or a variable. So it'll be 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to put that in parentheses to keep it separate from the other terms. Plus 2 times 2 plus 2. Now let's break this apart and do it step by step. So we have 2 times 2, which is 4, times 2 is 8. So the cubic of 2 is 8, 2 to the third power, plus 2 times 2, which is 4, plus 2 more. Now that we've simplified the exponents, and the uh, we've put them into this kind of expressions, all we have to do is the arithmetic now. So we have 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And that is our answer A. Now again, remember, when you have multiple exponents, make it easy on yourself and break it down into its form in that you're showing the multiplicative of itself that many times. It makes things a little easier. So, especially when you get involved with square roots too, you're going to have radicals that have exponents in them. And the simplification becomes a lot easier when you break it down like this. It takes a little more time, but it's extremely advantageous. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. In the next video, I'm going to be continuing on with the practice algebra exam. But if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask or message me. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. But I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and please take good care of yourselves. I'll see you again soon. Take good care.